Hey folks, uh, welcome to the podcast. Today I had a really interesting conversation with a guy called Jonathan Nadler. Jonathan's the managing director at the Canopy of Medical Cannabis, who are educating doctors about when and how to prescribe medical cannabis. And he's also uh, a chief digital officer and partner at a private equity firm called European Cannabis Holdings, who are doing some really interesting stuff to try and shape the future of cannabis in Europe. So lobbying government, uh, trying to shed the stigma away from using a drug for medicine that's been illegal for, you know, the best part of 70 years. So that's very interesting. We cover uh, all the various different terminology, uh, marijuana, cannabis, uh, THC, CBD, nootropics, um, you know, all of those things. So we'll try and get our heads around uh, what the differences are and what they mean. And uh, we hear also about his journey from university to running a couple of marketing agencies to now being the pioneer of the UK medical marijuana industry. I hope you'll enjoy it. Hey, it's Lewis. Welcome to the podcast. Enjoy our conversations anytime, anywhere. Boom, and we're live. I stopped saying boom in my podcast and I make complaints, so... <laughs> I don't know, you just got used to it, so I've got to say it now. <laughs> Great. Um, John, thank you for coming in. No worries. Thanks cool. I've me. been super excited about um, this podcast for ages. And even more excited now you bought me a little present. Some <laughs> CBD oil. It's great. I've just finished mine, so Good. thanks. Um, so, yeah, what is your, what's your background? And how did you become a pioneer of the UK <laughs> medical marijuana industry? And then my pioneer. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, so... Pleasure. I, um, I, 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 I was never great at university, and I left not knowing what I wanted to do, and I just kind of fell into, fell into marketing. And um, uh, after a few years of working for a large organisation, realised that I didn't like working for people. And much like me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so, so I set up an agency, as one does, and I was naive, twenty-four years old. What agency? Uh, it was called Baby Grand. Okay. Um, it was a fully integrated agency. Like marketing, advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that that kind of thing. It, it was it was cornerstones by a high net worth individual. Um, he he had a PLC, a big property company, and he he was putting money into startup businesses as, as a sideline to get away with tax, but also to see if he can make more cash in the process. Right, right. Interesting yeah. guy. Um, his business was half backed by Lehman Brothers, and. Um, we started doing stuff together and Lehman Brothers obviously went and his PLC went at the same time and ah, I, had okay. this, I had this opportunity to to um, either go back and work for a large corporation or or to um, keep going. Yeah. So I, I, I decided that I would, I would keep going and I, I, I fell upon a few um, fairly senior um, heavyweights in the industry who, who were looking to start their own thing as well. So I went into partnership with three other guys um, and we built this business from nothing and we grew it over six, seven years. Um, the the pinnacle being winning Marketing Society Awards in nice. 2013. Nice. Um, and then, and then uh, it wasn't growing, you know, it was a lifestyle business for, for them. It was their opportunity to take lots of money out on right, a yearly right. basis and just, you know, just to keep doing that rather than scale the business so I I left and um, started another uh, this time strategic consultancy with a fantastic strategist called Rebecca Brown um, who I'd known for a number of years before she'd come and done projects for us at Baby Grand so we started business together and and the, the whole idea was we would we would try and find a way to not create just another agency you know it, it would be different it would be us trying to be a strategic partner to companies and it wouldn't have layers of uh, cap managers and it wouldn't have all the things that you get in these typical traditional agencies so we built it nicely and, and aggressively for, for 18 months but the reality is that it's very difficult to do something different in that market uh, okay. and we turned around one day and it was just like okay we're managing people again we're doing all the things that we never wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do we do? So we, we made a decision in 2017 that we would we would go into a solvent liquidation 
um, and we would extract funds um, and we would go our separate ways. Fair enough, yeah. Uh, and at that point, I just thought, you know, I've got, I've got an opportunity here. You know, I, I've done this for 10, 10 years or so and I actually want to think about doing something that, that mirrors the type of entrepreneur that I believe I am. Um, so I, I, I took the cash out and sat back for a bit and looked around the world and just saw what was happening. And I've always been a passionate um, cannabis um, smoker uh, for recreational purpose, purposes. I've been smoking for years. And uh, in the last few years, I, I saw, I saw the, the medicinal side of it and how it could really help people as well. Um, and actually, also in the last few years, the, the way that I've consumed cannabis has been for a very different reason. So, you know, yeah, I've yeah. started to smoke to be a bit more creative, um, to have a different focus on the things that I'm doing in my business, you yeah, know, yeah. To, to really expand, expand the mind and also to relax and to, you know, be able to do those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I started to look around the world, and I saw that actually this was becoming a this is this is a nascent industry, but there's tons of tons of cash in it, you know, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and there's there's yeah. interest, interesting stuff happening. You go over to California, you go over to Canada, Amsterdam, uh, Amsterdam. It's, it's, you know, it's been interesting there for years. But you, you go to these other like you know, Canada became recreational last year in October. Yeah, it's the first yeah. G seven country to become recreational. Um, so there's clearly this tide of and change. And medical was has been. Medical okay was for a while. Med- yeah. medical's been okay there for a couple of years, yeah. and and but they they were the first year G seven country to, to to go into fully recreational. recreational. Yeah, yeah. Um, Uruguay's gone recreational, um, yeah. and clearly there's and a lot of states in America now. Lots of states in America, so you know you, you, you've got you've got a number of states in, in in America that are medical cannabis legal. You've got a number of um, states that are turning rec legal. Um, um, there's clearly fundamental issues at a federal lef- level still, um, yeah, yeah. but but and, and it is a bit of a mess mess when it, when you look at it from that perspective. But it, nonetheless, it's happening. It's happening all over the states, um, and and then you look to other parts of Europe, and it's starting to opening up. So you know, Germany's been open for a couple of years as a medical cannabis oh, okay. country. Right. I didn't realise. Yeah, and, and, and a few others. So, so so I was looking at that and then I started to look at the UK and, and the, the CBD market, um, cannabidiol, started to open. And the, the, it, start, it started to open really in 2017. It's really only gained traction in the last kind of seven, eight, nine months. Um, and I thought, do you know what? That's pretty much me. You know, it's business. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, a nascent industry. It's um, going from counterculture to mainstream. Um, all the things that I love about business, and also it's a it's a product that I understand inside out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it makes complete sense. Consumer, you can consumer. use your marketing skills. Exactly. And- exactly. So, so I thought, okay, well, the only way to do this is to is to um, bring out a product, test the market, understand what it's about, and then from there decide how to do something a bit more interesting. So everyone's coming out with these oils. So I just said, right, okay, it's time to make an oil. Um, so, 2000, so January 2018, I, I, I brought out um, Budka, which is a CBD 10 mil tincture bottle. Cool. So it's- and where'd you get that made? Um, so I... I did it. I did it on small scale. So I, I found I found a organic certified producer in Austria. Organic producer of CBD. Of, of CBD. Yeah, so yeah. It, it it comes from hemp. Yeah. So so it. We need to cover all the. I think we need to cover all the terms in a bit. Okay. Fine, Cannabis, fine, fine. hemp, yeah, marijuana, yeah. CBD. The acronyms are ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It comes from hemp. Um, so so it's um, uh, it, it, it's grown outdoors. Um, okay. It, yeah. When like um, greenhouses or something. Well, I mean, so, so some of the, some of them have have canopies. You know, so some some of them are a greenhouse. Um, some of them are just outdoor grows. Uh, it's a weed. You know, it's yeah, yeah. Yeah. it 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 grows. It doesn't it doesn't need much to grow. Uh, now clearly that you need talent to be able to grow it properly. Yeah. But you know, pretty much anyone can grow it. Um, if you really wanted to, it doesn't yeah, take much. Yeah. So yeah, so I so it's but I wanted to find 
the guys that were following interesting protocol on on C to sell um, okay. that understood the need to keep away from fertilizers that um, might have an impact on the end product. And I, I just wanted a very very clean oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I decided that I would I would go to someone that had the organic certification. I would um, I would use uh, hemp oil as the carrier, so that it was literally a one product oil. Right. Rather than mix it with olive oil or MCT oil. Some or, people do that. Which, which yeah. some people do. Yeah. And then I brought that to market. Is it better to not mix it with the other oils? No, look, I mean, it, it, everyone has their own way of doing it. You know, M- MCT is great because the bioavailability of it is a bit better. Yeah. Um, MCT, medium chain triglycerides. Right, there we go. I'm, I'm happy you said that rather than there me. There we go. For coconut, coconut oil. Coconut oil. Yeah. Um, and different oils have uh, d- d- different different um, uh, upsides when you consume yeah. them. Yeah, fine. But, but I, I chose I chose hemp. Cool. Um, and so I brought that to market, and and um, and I started trading online. I started selling to health food shops in central London. Oh, great! So we're stocked in around fifty odd. Now. Awesome, awesome. And. Um, and after a few months, I, I looked at the bank balance and thought, oh, hang on a sec. I sat back for a bit, <laughs> not done much. And then I bought this product out and invested money into it. And suddenly my, my bank balance doesn't look as rosy. <laughs> so I thought, <laughs> okay, <Entrepreneurship>, shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I best go and raise some cash. <laughs> yeah. um, so I started going around town looking for money and, um, and came across a few interesting investors. And um, it came down to two. And what, one of them was one of them was offering me uh, essentially um, a, a cash in, injection and and a team to help fast track growth, um, but was going to take a huge proportion of the business. And then the other business um, wasn't even offering me offering me that, but they became really interesting to me because it was um, it was the first time I, I'd come across a, a specialist cannabis investment fund. Right, UK based. UK based. And um, for me, that was, that was exciting. You know, there, there, was, there was a team of people here that had been doing stuff in the cannabis industry for a couple of years, which um, doesn't sound like a long time, but in an industry as young as ours, that makes them seriously mature. Yeah, yeah. Um and they've been operating with investors over in Canada where the market has been going for a number of years and they had positioned themselves in the UK and European market for um leadership and um fast expansion with a good with a, with a good number of institutional and and other investors behind them. So so they offer money and expertise actually. Exactly. Yeah. So the conversation materialized and um what i ended up doing was uh taking taking a uh, a management role within the fund nice um, nice whilst continuing yeah. to run Actually, both. okay um so i was made chief digital officer um of the fund yeah um, i'm now also partner of the fund um and my remit there is to use some of the skills that i've got um, picked up in, over the last 10 years in, in digital business and go around Europe finding um, new innovation in, in um, cannabis technology for us to invest in. Very cool. <laughs> it's like, interesting. Very cool, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. And then, and then the, the, I was also made managing director of um, a new business that they wanted to incubate, which, okay. is, which is an online education platform for doctors, All right. which teach them about medical cannabis. Ah. Um, starting in the UK, which we did last November, yeah, and now we're rolling out to different parts around the world. Amazing! So, what GPs or whoever, Who, whoever's got an interest in yeah. medical cannabis, you know, for, really for us, it's it's trying to make sure that patients get the medicine they need, and uh, to do that, you need to educate doctors because yeah, yeah, yeah. Do- doctors really are the gate, gate, gate um, the key holders to access. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, if you can get past them then you can get your prescription and uh you don't need to take the medicine you're, you're currently taking which may have side effects so gps will prescribe medical marijuana no that isn't how it works currently so the, so so the way it works currently um november the first 
medical cannabis uh, was rescheduled in the UK, which basically that mean it became le- it became legal and it became legal for medical purposes. Yeah, okay, yeah, but it's only allowed to be prescribed by specialist physicians on the GMC register. Um, and what's the GMC register? It's the uh, General Medical Council okay, register. Okay, so it needs to be licensed to dispense. You have to be a specialist, right? Okay, yeah, physician. So you have to be, you know, um, whether that be a pain specialist or uh, an oncologist or you know, basically not a GP. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's around seventy-seven thousand specialist physicians in the GMC register. All oh, right. Okay. Um, it's the it's the it's the doctors you get referred to by your GP. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. But GPs need to know what's going on. GPs need to understand the parameters. They need to know uh, what they can and can't say to patients. They need to understand the um, downside to medical cannabis um, and, and recreational cannabis. But they also need to understand the positives that it could give their patients so that they can consult more effectively. Um, but it's really, uh, for us, it's, it's building an education platform for the specialist physicians so that they can learn how to prescribe properly. So it's interactions with other drugs, it's dosage on medical okay. cannabis, yeah. it's um, how it works for different conditions. You know, it's, it's detailed stuff. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, it's authored by Professor Mike Barnes, who's uh, the European leading, ex- leading expert. You know, he's been writing for uh, government for a number of years. He, commis- okay. he was commissioned um, to write the Barnes report in 2016. He's, a, he's at the forefront of the industry. Yeah, yeah. Amazing, amazing. So I did that. Awesome. And then, and then a few months later, uh, they bought they bought Budka uh, from me. Oh, great! Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so now you're an investment professional. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, no, I'm, I'm I'm certainly not that. You know, I'm, it, it's it's my first. It's the first time I've been involved in in, in kind of corporate finance in this way. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I, I would say I would say that I'm I'm moving more towards being a cannabis expert. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, there's. I, I've had the opportunity to go pretty deep into my understanding on the subject, both through creating the content for the education platform, yeah, yeah. but also being around, you know, I'm, I'm seeing half a dozen businesses a week um, who've got different cannabis ideas. Wow. And um, I'm having to work with my team to make decisions on where we invest yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and how we, be that, how, how we build out the ecosystem across Europe. Brilliant. Um, Brilliant. So we're, we're 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 pretty much building the infrastructure yeah. for for the cannabis industry across Europe. Nice. Uh, that that's our remit. And then so then what's the state in the UK? Let's say. Yeah. So, so it's medical marijuana is legal legal now from November. Yeah, November the first. Fine. So yeah, so look, so so um, we've had hardly anyone receive um, prescriptions for medical cannabis. Uh, last count, it was. Um, uh, I could count on on under two hands, right? Uh, which is incredible considering the amount of patients that are shouting for it. Um, it's very difficult to get a script, to get a prescription. Um, and the reason it's so difficult is because, well, a number of reasons. You, know, you, ha- you have to remember that this drug has been in prohibition for, you know, 60, oh, 70, yeah. 80 years. Yeah, yeah. So you've got, you, we've got a lost generation um, before prohibition, there were hundreds of cannabinoid-based drugs that were um, given to patients on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundreds, and they, they they started to vanish when opiates and um, drugs that you inject started to come in, into being, and then that that depletion of um, the amount of drugs on the market cannabinoid drugs on the market really went into free fall Interesting. When, um, when, when, when the US started to hammer home that it was a negative bad thing yeah, um, yeah. war on drugs and the war on drugs came in so this was 70 years ago uh, I mean when they get yeah, the dates wrong probably. but no, it, 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 was, it was it was yeah. it was like you know, I wasn't alive then so I've got no idea but <laughs> yeah you know it was when there was black and white TV that's for sure <laughs> Yeah. Um, it, you know, yeah, it's it, it, yeah. Anslinger, yeah. who who was who was a, a federal commissioner in the U.S., um, was one of the loudest voices to bring bring about prohibition. You know, he he um, he was a racist and a bigot, 
and um, he he associated marijuana, which is a negative word, right? M- marijuana is a negative negative word um, because of his association with that word and uh, black people in the US. Uh, right. um, oh yeah, yeah. And he he made people believe that um, it was because of that drug that lots of um, interracial relationships were happening and other other horrible things that were happening in in the country. Apparently, Crazy according man. to him at that, at that point, it was a it was a, it was a horrible time. But it it, it was a catalyst for prohibition. Um, and you know, it takes a long time to get rid of that stigma. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even if there's good evidence coming out, yeah, and so, and in the and in the, I mean in America the stigma seems to have almost vanished, right? Well, certainly on the West Coast, I guess like East Coast, New York and stuff, it's probably still a bit conservative. It's coming but through, it's probably coming through. It's coming through here, yeah. though. Here, it's very conservative here. Here's very conservative, yeah, yeah. You know, the government, the government believes that they've done their bit um, by rescheduling November the first. Um, the reality is that they're now just passing the buck to NHS um, and Department of Health and Social Care and and suggesting that it's down to them to make these decisions. But the guidance that are in place, that so so there's interim guidance that, that the, um, the medical market are working to, um, whilst NICE come up with the, the proper guidance to be released autumn this year. And the guidance that, that's in place... Um, essentially limit physicians from uh from deciding to use medical cannabis as as um as a medicine of choice for patients uh, until they've exhausted all other medicines now brave physicians are standing up and saying i believe in it i'm going to start prescribing it you know there's there's clear evidence in my eyes that um it's working but the problem is that um, the health sector operates um, based on medicines passing stringent processes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, r- r- uh, random controlled testing, uh, different phases of testing, uh, not observational testing. Um, and the problem with this medicine type is it's unlike any other that's ever existed um, you know, over the last hundred years in, in in the UK. In the sense that it's a natural medicine, you know, it's not a yeah, sing, it's yeah. not a single API. It's not it's not like you've um, isolated one one ingredient and that's your drug. Uh, which is what GW Pharma, which is one of the only cannabinoid uh, pharmaceutical companies to exist globally, is what they've done with one of their drugs. They've created a 99.9% CBD isolate um, as as one of the drugs that they, that have passed the um, the US FDA. Okay. Um, you can't do that with full spectrum cannabis, and therefore the industry is fighting really hard for full spectrum cannabis to be given to more patients medically um but the but but, but the, the 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 uh the bureaucratic industry are, are, are quite heavy-handed on this why don't we just cl- clarify what the different terms are so we've okay. got and then we can move on to the because uh, it's super interesting so we've got <clears throat> marijuana cannabis weed mm. cbd thc because i think mo- most people i speak to when i say um Hey, I've been doing CBD oil at home for my pain relief because I had slipped my discs and I don't want to take like the hardcore medicine. They're it like, goes. yeah. Mm. I mean, the first thing most people say is, oh, does it get you high? You know, what does mm. it feel like? Is it really cool? Um, so, yeah. So what's the difference between, let's say, marijuana and cannabis and then the different active ingredients in, in it? Okay. Yeah. Well, so mar- 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 marijuana and cannabis are the same thing. <laughs> um it's crazy. Ca- cannabis hasn't got the stigma. <laughs> yeah, cannabis hasn't got the stigma. It's crazy. I, I sat in a meeting the other day, and and um, uh, and um, it was in it was in Parliament. That the the, the um, Crispin Blunt, who's a great MP and, and uh, bangs the drum for medical cannabis. He and called a good it, surname for it as well. Yeah, exactly. Great surname. For it. <laughs> Never thought about that. I wonder if he has. That's very interesting. Um, 
he yeah he called a meeting for some some of the industry to to get around the table to to, to have a to have a meeting we're, we're, uh, meeting we're, we're working towards a, a, a national committee um and one of the guys that was that was there he's the head of uh the social clubs so he's a great guy you know he he campaigns for fully recreational grow your own okay um which is what uh, another interesting patient advocate group does called the UPA as well United Patients Alliance, um, really important groups for um, moving things forward. And they're lobbying government. Right? They're, 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 they're lobbying hard and um, they're, they won't stop until their patients get the medicine they need. And um, he, he, he came to the table with a point which is around skunk. You know, the national media and lots of MPs in government, they, they use the word skunk to... To, to, to get to get across the idea that there's there's negatives attached to it but the reality is and this is what he says the other day is like <laughs> the medicine that's being prescribed for certain patients is high in thc um so high in thc that you classify that as skunk as well you know there's there's well, so is there is there a cl- is there a classification? Well, it's just high THC, you know, right, anything okay. over like say fifteen percent. I don't know the the, the exact yeah. you know, level at which it's classified as skunk, but <laughs> but the reality is is that if it's high THC, it's high THC. THC tetrahydrocannabinol is the active ingredient that um, is intoxicating. Fine, so that's the bit that gets you high. It's the bit that gets you high. Yeah. Um, it, it it you know it has it has an impact on uh, neurotransmitters. Um, what what was found out um, back in the late nineties by a, a great scientist in in Israel, whose name I've completely forgotten and not only forgotten, but if if I d- did remember it, I wouldn't want to say it because it's quite a difficult surname. Fine. Um, but he, he he found that the um, that all of us have endocannabinoid systems, so systems of um, that have transmitters and natural natural cannabinoids. So cannabinoids yeah. are the things that are found in the plant. So THC is a cannabinoid. CBD is a cannabinoid. Yeah. There's over 113 cannabinoids in the plant. Right. Okay. And in our bodies, there's natural cannabinoids, and what, one of those natural cannabinoids is anandamide. So anandamide, um, also known as the happy enzyme is the thing that's released into your brain that um that changes your mood interesting naturally naturally yeah. naturally and what so 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 you, you've got you've got endocannabinoids so natural inside our bodies and then you've got phytocannabinoids which are found in the plant um and then you've got lab made synthetic cannabinoids right okay um but um but the so 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 THC is the one that gets you high. Uh, it also attaches itself to receptors in your body, so it has therapeutic effect. Okay, fine. So anti-inflammatory effects, anti-convulsant effects. Um, there's there's research going on all over the world at the moment to see if it has um, effects to reduce cancer cells. Um, there's research going on to see if it has an impact on Parkinson's disease. Oh wow! Okay. Um, you know, there's lots and lots of stuff going on. So, currently. so now, so now it's like started to become legal for certainly medical use in a lot of countries. Now the studies are starting to, because there haven't been a lot of studies, I guess, over the last say seventy years no. because of the uh, exactly the illegal nature of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so um, there's there's a really interesting chart that um, a, a, a scientist working for what what one of the one of the big cannabis bodies um, in the UK, um, she put on screen the other week at, at, at a conference, and um, it shows the growth of R and D in in cannabinoid science over the last ten years, and we've gone from next to none, to to there being you know hundreds now in in Brilliant. motion. Brilliant. Um, so we're gonna, we're going to start to see some really interesting stuff coming out in the yeah, next yeah. couple of years. And so people are looking at. So are they isolating the different um, compounds, so THC, CBD, and the others? And are they also looking at like the combinations of? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. So, the, so we, the, the, there's something called the entourage effect. The entourage effect is 
is a term given to uh, how full spectrum cannabinoids work hand in hand. So the idea being that um, you don't separate the cannabinoids out and you get better therapeutic effects by having them all working in harmony. Um, so there's so many different genetic genetic strains of of cannabis. I don't know how many, but you know it's it goes on and on and on, and they're constantly finding new genetics um, and creating new genetics. Um, and 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 in each of these genetics and each of these plants, when they're grown, uh, has different levels of different cannabinoids. Yeah. So you might find that one plant's got, you know. F- uh, four percent cbd ten percent thc two percent cbn uh one percent cbc and all these different cannabinoids have some kind of therapeutic benefit when they're working together okay so if you if you imagine that that's one and then think about how many different um uh options that you get with different genetics suddenly it's like it's mm-hmm. a lifetime worth of r d crazy and is, is this one of the reasons why we're not seeing it prescribed so much at the moment because because like how much do you take what do you prescribe yeah can you overdose uh there's I been mean, there's, there's been no cases of yeah. overdose and there's been there, there's there's been no cases of death related to cannabis um now clearly there's downsides uh so there's 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 some level of evidence to show that uh within young developing minds uh high thc could have an impact on the brain uh, it's like psychosis and depression psychosis, and stuff like that. But uh, there's also evidence to show that that could be attached to um, uh, people who have uh, certain genetics anyway. So, you know, there, there, there are risks attached to it at certain points. But the same goes for, you know, you, you, you wouldn't... The, the 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 reason why epileptic children's parents are campaigning so hard for medical cannabis instead of the drugs they're they're taking is because the drugs they're taking are having ma- massive negative impact on their children. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's not just cannabis. Cannabis is just in the limelight, but it's because it's a new it's a new drug. Know, it's a new thing, and the bar- the barriers are much higher than yeah the currently used. And I guess the, the back to the skunk stigma and the high oh, right, THC. Yeah. No, no, no. It's all connected. I mean, because the high TH, the skunk is always considered to have a lots of THC, right? And then you think about young kids smoking lots of skunk, and I don't know, going crazy or depressed and yeah. and stuff like that. And I guess there hasn't been many long term studies yet on the on the long term effects. Mostly anecdotal, I guess. Um, yeah, there, so, there, there, there needs to be more done on, on yeah. both sides. Both, you know, yeah. um, we, we need we need to find out how it can be used as a cure, um, and that that's clearly the most important thing for us to to focus on over the, over, the, over the next 10, 15, 20, 20 years. But it also needs to um, that there needs to be R and D done on 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 the negative impact of of, yeah. of it as a drug as well. And I think that you know. Um, what 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 the medical community need most is is just the scientific rigor you know the the evidence base to give them the reassurances they need to to use it in um some kind of program of of yeah, yeah. of medicine for their patients um and until we have more research it's going to be very difficult for those doctors to fill motivated to to and confident to to yeah, actually to actually true. prescribe so we need we we need evidence but we can't rely on the format of evidence that uh, the medical uh, world has relied on to date because as i say it's a natural medicine we mentioned all the different cannabinoids found in the plant there's yeah. too much differentiate too much of a differentiator between each each of the different genetics and it's too difficult for us to test in the way that they have historically tested other medicines. So there needs to be a breakthrough very quickly whereby they turn around and say, we know, we, we recognize that um, we can't do random control testing in, in the same way here. So we need to look at it in a different way. Perhaps the way that we look at rare diseases and medicines that we need to produce for rare diseases in this country and come to a conclusion whereby we say if there's enough observational evidence um, that's the point where we say okay therefore as specialist physicians we should be 
aggressively prescribing this to patients that are showing signs where they need this type of medicine is there a willingness to do that it's it's, it's you know there's 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 fragments um within department of health and yeah. nhs and so on that that are fighting for it that they're, they're, Great. they're actively looking for ways to do this it's just you know we're operating it's a long journey it's a long journey it's a slow bureaucratic system it's it's painful is there much going on in the u.s there's probably been more going on in the u.s than yeah yeah the, the, the R&D in the US is phenomenal. It must, yeah, it must be amazing. But we can't use their, we can't use their research. Why not? Um, and and is, in Israel as well, you know, in, in Israel, the research in Israel is, is fantastic. Um, we can't use their research because, uh, and, and I, I think rightly so, you know, we, we, we have different ways of going about researching medicines. Um the states are fantastic and the universities clearly do phenomenal things when it comes to R&D. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, they approve medicine uh, uh, at much faster rates than we do. But the reality is, is that if you, if, if you look uh, in retrospect and, and, and you go back six months after certain drugs have been released into the market, they pretty much vanish. Uh, because uh, it might be that after a few months they realise that it's not actually as effective as they believed it would be. Right. Okay. And um, and, and I think because of that, the the, the UK take a, a conservative stance on this, and they say we need to we need to do it our own way. Oh, fine. So the runway is much longer here. Yeah. Well, the process is just different. The process is different. Mm. Yeah. So in the, so if we look to the US, then lots of people are getting prescriptions for medical marijuana. They yes. are. They yeah. are. It's huge. I mean, you, yeah. you go into certain states and you don't even need to have a card. You know, you can just go into a recreational dispensary and you can buy what you want. Fine. And then you can select the content of THC, CBD. Yeah, it's like it's like walking into an Apple shop. You know, you can you can go th- you can scroll through a um, uh, a tablet and just select the one you want, and suddenly it comes out in a nice box. You know, it's yeah, and, yeah. And, and and but but the interesting thing about about the US market. And and other you know markets like Canada is um, the the demographic for consumption of this is is actually a lot older than you might think. It's not it's not teenagers looking to get high. I mean clearly that does, that does happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it's the over fifties. Really. They've got so what's the people who are like maybe using other pain relief? Yeah. Pills, tablets, which obviously addictive, bad for your stomach, all of that kind of stuff, and maybe want to get off that. Yeah. They, yeah. Opioids. Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, opioids is is uh, a, a growing killer. Um, yeah, yeah, so addictive and and addictive and and actually has horrendous side effects. So those that have been on th- those that suffer with chronic pain, um, which cl- clearly becomes a large proportion of society when you get older, um, they're trying to get away from those drugs yeah. and and medical cannabis is a natural alternative that actually works so, so how far away are we do you think here to like genuinely be able to go to your doctor and you've got pain you need relief you don't want to take t- tablets yeah um so so our fund um has a chain of medical cannabis clinics uh so the first one opened in manchester a few weeks ago oh cool and we've got one opening in Harley Street in a few weeks, and um, we're going to have probably six or seven this year in the UK, and then the expansion into Europe um, this year and next year. Um, and we've had our pain specialist, Doctor McDowell, up in Manchester, prescribe already for for chronic pain. All right. Um, these are private clinics. These are private clinics. <laughs> so if I've got some pain, I can go to the clinic, pay for an appointment. Yeah, and they'll go through my whatever my case, and if relevant, prescribe me. Exactly. And you can. And where do you get? When do you? Where do you get it from? So that, that that's the that's the, that's the difficult bit, you know. We're so so, <laughs> so so. I've got my prescription. I'm like, yes, finally. Finally, you've got something for your pain. Um, it's very it's very challenging at the moment. You know, we 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 we're, we're, we're trying to give access to patients. So um, so again, our, our fund. Um, has just gone into a joint venture with uh, one of the largest specialist importers in the country. Oh, nice. Um, and the idea being that um, we can help get the prescription into the country because none of it's cultivated here currently. I mean, look. Nothing's grown here at all. It's grown here um, by British Sugar for GW Pharma. 
All right. Um, we're the biggest exporters of medical cannabis globally. Who are? We- the UK. Really? Yeah. You never knew that. It's How crazy. Funny. It's crazy. But yeah, we can't. We can't. Um, we can't get prescriptions from um, so, so they growers can... in the UK. Really? Not yet. Weird. So we go to. We have to go to EU GMP certified. All right. Um, so who do they grow it for? They grow it for G- GW Pharma, which is which, which is the company that makes the uh, Epidiolax and uh, right. a, f- a few other meds that use cannabinoids. Um, it's a bit convoluted, uh, uh, you know. I, yeah, it seems strange, right? It, it, it's like uh, everyone loves like homegrown local produce. Yeah, it feels like we should be getting our medical marijuana from the UK. Um, we we need to. Needs maybe to. after Brexit, we'll have to. Who knows? Yeah. We, we we need to we need to you know we 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 um if you look at other countries that are opening up they they're they're working hard to be self sufficient but the reality of it is is that um currently Canada mainly other parts some parts of Europe have got um cultivators of their own but mainly Canada has got cultivators that have the right pharmaceutical grade product um with the right certifications to be brought into this country to be used as medicine. Um, so, our, so our our task currently is, you know, short term before uh, a better fix is in place. How can we help get cannabis into the country, and then how can we help get that cannabis to the patient? Fine. And so, ultimately, would one be able to go to one of the Harley Street Clinic, get the prescription they need, and then also get the uh, the prescription from your clinic? Uh, we, we we wouldn't be able to actually fill dispense it. it. Yeah, you couldn't dispense it. Okay. But 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 they, they would they would then go and find a pharmacy to be able to, uh, who would then be able to go and find it from our importer. Oh, okay, fine. So at some point, the local pharmacy will have. Not not yet, but yes, in in, in, point, in, in, yeah. in the future, in the future, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just to confirm, just to clarify, so it's 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 regarded as a pharmaceutical. It's regarded as a special, a specials medicine. Okay. Um, so there's a number of special medicines which haven't gone through um, the same process for licensing as a pharmaceutical grade medicine. Okay. Um, and uh, we we'll, we'll probably be in that category for a while longer. I mean, right. the, the 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 drugs like the Epidiolux um, uh, from GW is a is a pharmaceutical. Um, which has FDA approval in the US. Okay, yeah. Um, and has actually been able to be prescribed in the UK for a while, but it's just um, very, very expensive. I mean, I forget the exact figure, but it's tens of thousands of pounds a year to oh, have wow. that medicine for one patient. All right, fine. But yes, but but but, but theoretically, um, in the short term before NHS sort their act out, um, you can be referred to a private clinic or a specialist physician and if that specialist physician decides that you need medical cannabis they will write you out a prescription which then you can go and get your medical cannabis with but they're not but you can't the challenge is actually getting the medical cannabis and and then you have to wait a while to actually get the medical cannabis in so so we still have then i guess a big section of society that are getting it illegally if they really want it oh yeah I mean, and then hopefully, as this all starts to clear up, we'll have a a good supply. And yeah, I mean, you you get it. I mean, the the, the cost for this because you have, you have to pay for this yourself. So the 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 prescription that was fulfilled um, a few weeks ago, which made it into the news, um, it, it it came out at um, one thousand four hundred pounds for fifty grams. Wow. Um. And then, if you were to get fifty grams illegally, yeah. So what you're looking at a few hundred quid, or yeah, yeah. So why would you not go to a, a different a different black market source? I mean, Absolutely, it just doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, the the, the 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 only thing stopping people from doing that is that they don't want to break the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, if if you can, I think there was also a case of a kid at the at the airport or something. He had um. I think it I had was a vape convers- or something. Confiscated. Com- something was confiscated. Yeah, yeah. Child epilepsy case. Yes, that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So the CBD. Yeah. Right. So that that is is different, right? Um. So that's is that classified as a health food? 
rather than like what's what's the scenario yeah. around that because i go to holland and barrett or wherever health food shop yeah very, and, and then you can just buy yeah. the oil or the vape or yeah it's it's the, the, the this is great also <laughs> um i don't know i don't know if you notice a theme here but we're we're, we're in the gray market that's why you're pioneering that's yeah pretty. So yeah, ca- cannabidiol um, CBD. Uh, it's it's classified as a well. It's actually classified as a novel food. That we're 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 in the middle of of of, of a few challenges here. Um, the the market for CBD has grown over the last eighteen months to a fairly considerable size. Um, the Cannabis Trade Association, who uh, look after the CBD. Uh, market from a from a, a brand perspective so they have hundreds of brand owners um as members oh, okay yeah they 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 gave a figure the other day of uh, seven million uh, people consumers in the uk are taking cbd regularly all right and that market's grown in the last 18 months it's grown as a food supplement um so that's been the way that we've managed to overcome regulation um so by it being a food supplement it sits with the food safety food safety food, food standards, standards agency, agency yeah. fsa um as opposed to the mhra medical health medical health regulation authority i think <laughs> <I'm> terrible <laughs> my acronyms too many acronyms it's too yeah, many yeah. Acronyms. um but eu level um changes that are currently going on are trying to uh, rubber stamp CBD being classified as a novel food. Novel food meaning that um, if you can't prove that it was ingested um, orally as a uh, as a food type pre nineteen ninety seven, um, <laughs> very obscure, random. really random, uh, then then it can't be sold. It's illegal. Uh, so the industry are struggling massively to to overcome this at EU level. It's an ongoing thing happening right now. Wow. And um, we're going to know in a few weeks where, where we stand on, on it. Oh, so it could be off the shelves? It could be on the sh- off the shelves quite easily. Um, and there's clearly a bit of scaremongering going on. Uh, but the, the largest uh, retailers that stock CBD, like Colin and Barrett, um, Planet Organic, people like that. Uh, they're they're steadfast. You know, they're not, they're not moving. They like selling it. They love it. selling it. It's it's you know it's a cash cow for them, but also they get observational evidence given back to them by customers on a regular basis, saying it's working. Um, so what do people use it for? So it's used. So, so it's used for a number of different things. So. Um, you, you've got a bunch of people that will use it to sleep better. It calms the mind, right? It's very difficult this one because you, you can't give too many benefits. You can't you can't claim benefits. Uh, so it's it's quite a tricky subject. You can't claim it what because there's not been enough studies or well because if you claim a benefit, then it's a medicine. Oh, I see. But what about a, um, I don't know, like spirulina in your smoothie or something? Or You have to be very careful with that also. You know, MCT the, oil, coconut all, oil? All of these things, you, there, there's there's certain parameters you have to, okay. you're guided by. Um, it, 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 as soon as you say CBD helps cure X, uh, suddenly that's, been, that, that's, that's a claim. And if you're doing that, then you better have evidence behind you to prove it. Okay, right, right. And the evidence, uh, and and evidence in such a way that is is validated, um, but but you're 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 straddling um, food supplements and medicine. If you do that, so you have to be very careful. But why people take it? Um, pe- people seem to take it to sleep better. Um, they they take it because they are they have anxiety. Uh, maybe depression and they they use it because they think it will help um with that they they may use it because they have ibs crohn's disease and and things that um around gut health uh where they where they see this as um as assisting them with those symptoms 
Um, you have you have a huge population of of people that do yoga and go to the gym that take it to mend quicker to 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 reduce inflammation. Uh, okay, yeah. You know, there's there's a, there's a number of reasons why you might take it. Um, what 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 we're doing is we're 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 trying to move it. We you know it. It's a funny thing, right? You know, you, you've got seven million people taking this now, um, and the majority of them are taking it in tincture form. So they're taking it in these ten mil brown bottles. Okay, with, so what? With so like dropping the oil. Yeah, 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 yeah. Putting it under their tongue. Their bioavailability is a bit better. Um, so it goes into the bloodstream blood, quicker. Straight into the bloodstream, yeah. yeah. And um, and that's great, but people looking in, and, and, and the, the majority of these people, uh, so it's like early, early adopters. Early adopters that take CBD, they take it because they're at their wit's end. You know, they've tried everything. They're desperate. You know, they, they can't sleep or they're, they're, they're constantly anxious. Whatever it might be, they see this as a remedy. So they're the people that come in first. And then there's then there's the other people that have inflammation after exercising. They want to continue doing what they do. That and this is just another way to, for them to hack, to to to, yeah. to, to kind of optimizing what they do. Stuff. Yeah. But for us, it's like okay, we we want to normalize cannabis, and what CBD is starting to do quite nicely is it removes the stigma, because although it's still a psychoactive, because it does have an impact on on the mind. It's non it's non intoxicating, so yeah, it doesn't yeah. get you high. Yeah, and so you can drive on it. Whatever. You can yeah, exactly. You can do anything on it. Uh, I mean, there's there's flight there, there's small type that says you know you shouldn't take it if you're lactating or you know pregnant or what have you. But again, that's just safety measures. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what we want to do is we 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 want to keep normalizing it, and the way for us to normalize it is to put it into a product that moves away from just being a tincture and becomes a consumer um, mass market product. So we now have come up with um, a health snack bar and the health snack bar is called, it's called Neuro, N-O-O-R-O. -O -O, and nice. it's a play on neurological. Yeah. Um, and it's the first, it's the first uh, health snack bar for your mind uh, with CBD. Right. Um, so, so what's in it? Well, CBD, yeah, <laughs> and and, and, so, and dosage, like, is it Tw like twenty twenty five milligrams? Is that a lot of CBD? It's a fair amount. So, so it's, about, it's about it's a daily intake. It's a daily intake. Yeah. So if you've got genuine, I don't know, if you've got some pain or insomnia or something like that, you could have that, and that would. Well, I mean, again, we can't put claim to it. No, no, no. Um, no, no. Uh, but but you know, it, so we so what we say is. Um, if you're looking for calm, clarity, and focus, you know, this is for busy people, right? Yeah, yeah. We want it to be an ingredient for mind health. You know, so we want people to think about eating food for cognitive cognitive function. And you know, we're big into nootropics. You yeah, know, things yeah. that have an impact, adaptogens, things that yeah. have an impact on the way that your mind and, works. And so, <clears throat> nootropics are things that improve your mental health, cognitive focus, function. cognitive stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, we're, your your um, your 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 brain mass is um, uh, around th you know three percent of body weight, uh, yet requires fifteen percent of oxygen and blood flowing to it. Yeah, right. Um, and you know, so certain nootropics help with blood flow in your brain. Yeah, uh, which keep you more active, keep your brain healthier. Um, and CBD has very similar qualities to it. You know, it helps release. Uh, serotonin in different levels to your brain it helps with an andamide release into your brain these things that change mood that help you relax more that give you focus you know all that kind of stuff is is what cbd does brilliant so we want we want to put it into a snack bar and we want we want people to start eating um food um snack food not for energy for your body or protein for your body but actually to help with your mind love that yeah love that you can speak to my friend Toby. He does the vending machines. We're going to be with vending. him. We're going to be with him. Are you amazing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get that out. We'll, we'll, I'll definitely try some. Um, I'll, no, bring I love some in. I'll bring some in. Yeah, bring some in. Because a lot of the snack bars, you're right, are protein and yeah, fuel. Yeah, but this is fuel for your mind, which you're exactly right. Super cool. Love that. What about vaping? Uh, CBD. Are yeah. many people doing that? 
Yeah, yeah. Because I started doing that. Because I, I basically have um, three slip discs in my back. Jesus. Yeah. Um, too much running and stuff. So, um, so basically, I'd be, I was on like naproxen and a few other pain relief. But yeah. it's not good for your stomach. And I'd rather not be on any of that. Mm. And then it was around about the same time CBD started to get uh, some traction. So I started trying it with the vape vaporizer. And then... Um, yeah, for me, it seems to have worked really well. I've mm. never, I haven't taken the pain relief, like mm-hmm. the tablets mm-hmm. since, and I've just been vaping and then I use the oil and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the yeah. problem I found is that you never quite know how much to take. You can just keep having a go at it because you can't really, you can't overdose on this stuff. Mm. Um, and look, and it's, it's, I don't think so anyway. No, no, no. Um, well, I've never seen it. No. So it's, look, for me, it's, yeah. been, it's been really cool. Vape, 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 vape is interesting. Ugh, I mean, I... I, I try to distance myself from anything that you inhale. Um, Why? I just don't like. Um, look, I, I know more 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 needs to be done. More more needs to be done across across the board from an evidence perspective on cannabis generally, but I don't think that I would ever feel comfortable um, recommending to anyone, uh, friend or otherwise to inhale something into their lungs um you know there's clearly carcinogenic um issues attached to it um smoking yeah but vaping i thought vaping it's the was... same thing because you you you're, you're still inhaling some kind of substance into your lungs yeah yeah uh so just there isn't enough known not enough ev- on um, it. no trials or yeah and and I, I i just feel very unsteady um talking to anyone about inhaling anything Fair enough. um yeah. so for, for, for me for me the mark the market is oil and capsules um and there's also the vaping i guess still a little stigma because it's smoking and yes yeah. you know. exactly yeah yeah i i i think i i think that if you if you look at the the growth areas in places that are uh recreationally legal or medical legal in, in places like u.s You'll see, you'll see. There's a huge influx of people that are taking it in oil form or edible form, um, and and that's the market. You know, the 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 the, the market will be edibles and oils and capsules, um, and we'll we'll see anything in hell die die down. Yeah, yeah, I think you're probably right. Yeah. So the capsule, you can just take a couple before you sleep or when yeah, you wake up, exactly. Along with your other vitamins and minerals and stuff like that. And that's it. Love it. Yeah, yeah. How far do you think we're away from recreational? Good question. In the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we all want, right? Absolutely. Now, <laughs> so our, 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 our line on this is is that you know we we are just medical, but clearly recreational is 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 where people think we need to go. Um, you won't get and you, you'll get very few MPs talking about recreational, um, even though there was a question in Parliament um, a few months back uh, that asked for a vote on it, and we we, we actually weren't. A, a long way off um i think we're probably i think we're probably uh five years away all right i should think it will actually happen here oh yeah 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 it's gonna happen um it's just a question of so if it happens long. recreationally then for all the medical stuff that's going to be awesome right just available yeah. and yeah well i i think the process is um it will open up more to specialist physicians in the next six to nine months so you'll see a lot more uh, referred patients getting medical cannabis uh, prescribed to them. Um, you'll then see NHS move up uh, once product comes down in price and um, and more evidence is available on it. And therefore, more patients will be receiving um, medical cannabis uh, without having to pay for it. And then once that happens, um, GPs will be able to prescribe. So you'll be able to go to your local doctor. And um, if they see reason, they'll be able to prescribe you medical cannabis. And then a few years after that, um, there'll start to be uh, um, some kind of change in regulation that will mean that you can go to a dispensary of sorts, like yeah. a chemist, yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and buy medical cannabis freely. Brilliant. So this is an unstoppable train now. It looks that way. Yeah, yeah. It looks that way to me. I mean, there has to be something, something big and fundamental has to happen uh, to stop the, the the process from happening. Uh, so you, you would, 
something dreadful like you know pe- people dying because of it um or huge huge amounts of evidence ap- uh, appearing which shows um a uh, long term effect uh, negative effect if if you see things like that it would be very difficult for the industry to fight back yeah, yeah. um but the way things are going and the evidence that we're seeing globally shows us that that's the last thing that's going to happen you know it's helping people everywhere um it will continue to help people and those that aren't having the ability to access it are suffering because of it and it's getting to a point where it's almost inhumane you know that you've got people that are, are, are really on their knees calling out for this and we can see from other things that's happening that other stuff other stuff that's happening with patients in other parts of the world that it's working for them yeah so yeah, yeah. the fact that the same type of condition isn't being dealt with with the same medicine in this country is is appalling really yeah it needs to change no definitely awesome well keep doing what you're doing yes um thanks for coming in thanks for having me no pleasure um great to speak cool cool thanks ma'am cheers hey folks thanks for listening don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places